Welcome to validation and state streams. This is going to be a longer set of notes. It's not meant to be really hard, but we got to show you some code. Um, we got to show you some game planning. Really, except for one spot where it's a try and catches, there's really no new code that you're going to learn. But we got to learn different strategies on how to validate. But why is, number one, I've done this before myself, is I've collected data and then realized I have to go back and fix something. Um, I've done that a couple times myself. So that's one thing we need to think about design-wise, and we'll talk about that really in the next page. The other part is, is making sure that we have some type of input type validation. We expect a certain input and you don't get it. How do you recover from that? And also, that's going to trigger a steam, a steam, a stream fail bit flag, which we will talk about here in a little bit. But we also need to discuss and design what the data range validation is going to be for every single variable. And we'll really talk about that on the next page. Now, very simply, and you've done this before, is that here we have, we're going to collect an age and we're just going to simply display it. But I'm sure you've had this before. We typed in the wrong type of data. Here's a string of ASAS, and we still get a value of zero. There, that's a problem. We sh our program or application should not accept something that, frankly, we weren't expecting. Even if we did type it, here's another one, entering a float. I did 23.3. My daughter's 5.5, uh, sorry, 5.57, uh, whatever. <sighs> anyway. We can't do that. The age goes by an integer. So we have to double check to see really what data that we're collecting in so that we can process it for our application later on. So these two items, even though we just use this code and no errors popped up, we've got to do some validation because otherwise it's going to go, well, rather screwy on exactly what our application wants to do.